the beginning of 2020, I decided to start uploading my photography to Shutterstock. Over the space of five months, I uploaded 183 images and 39 videos. And one year later, at the time of recording this, I've made 301 sales, which equates to a total of $81.88. Yep. That was five months of solid work and then I decided to stop uploading because Shutterstock had announced that they were going to change the pricing structure where they give less to the contributors and more to themselves. Not to brag, but this is all technically passive income. And although I'm not actively uploading anymore, I did learn a thing or two about the stock photography industry. So if at this point you're still interested in some sweet 10 cent gains, then I've made this video for you as a beginner in 2021. Let's not waste any more time and jump straight in. What you need to know about the stock photography industry. To earn money on Shutterstock, you need to understand some of the basic ins and outs of how the stock photography industry works. The first thing you need to know is that stock photography is a numbers game. Because the return on each sale is so low, you're not going to make a significant amount of money with a small portfolio of images. You also shouldn't expect to get rich quick. Making money on Shutterstock first and foremost requires consistency, time and dedication. But don't let any of that discourage you. If you're a keen photographer and you've got the time and discipline, the reality is Shutterstock could work for you in the long run. Commercial versus editorial. When it comes to uploading your photography, you need to understand whether your images are going to be licensed for commercial or editorial use. The goal of commercial photography is to sell or advertise a product, service or brand. This means that every model or property needs to have the appropriate release forms. Your images also shouldn't include any other identifiable logos or branding from other companies. These types of images should be more polished when it comes to uploading. The objective of editorial photography is to tell a story, so this could be things that are deemed newsworthy. For example, this could include protests, events, or anything of public interest. These types of images don't require release forms, which is great, but something to watch out for is they can't be heavily edited. Instead, they should represent a true depiction of what you're capturing. So which one should you upload as a beginner? Generally, commercial images tend to sell better because they can be used for a wider range of projects. So I'd start there, but then don't rule out editorial either. If you've got images on your hard drive that you think would be deemed as newsworthy and relevant, then get those uploaded as well. Why keywords are so important. Your success on Shutterstock will be dependent on these two things, high quality images and keywords. Keywords are essentially how your customers will find your images, so it's integral to get right when uploading. There are two main factors for getting your images discovered. The description, which allows you to have a total of 200 characters, and then keywords, where you can add up to a 50. Make your titles as accurate and descriptive as you can, answering the main questions of who, what, where, when, and why. Be as specific as possible and try to use all 200 characters, and the same goes for keywords too. You've got 50, so use them all. Also, you should think outside of the box. Make sure you include conceptual words that describe the emotions or feelings of your images. If you are stuck, Shutterstock has a good keyword suggestion tool, so I recommend using that, where you can find similar types of images to the ones you've already uploaded, and then essentially look at their keywords and borrow those. Rejection. Okay, so you've submitted your first images. Something to watch out for, and is probably inevitable, is you're gonna get some rejections. Shutterstock has a rather tight set of rules to follow and if your images don't meet their criteria, they will be rejected. But don't worry, there are some things you can do to get your images approved even after being rejected and that's what I'm going to show you now. From my experience, most images can easily be re-edited and this is actually a normal process when uploading. Take this image for example, it kept getting rejected due to copyright infringement and I couldn't for the life of me figure out why. I'd already spent a lot of time carefully removing what I thought was every logo in the background However, I'd missed this tiny logo, which is half on show. So essentially once I photoshopped that out and then I re-uploaded the image, it was approved by Shutterstock. Other things to consider, you'll need to make sure that your images are noise free, in focus, have all the appropriate release forms and are different from what's already been uploaded to the platform. So my advice is double check everything, but don't be put off if your images are rejected. There's a good chance that only a few minor edits are needed to get your images approved. My strategy for planning shoots. If you're going to go down the commercial route, you're going to have to produce new original images for Shutterstock, which then opens the question, what do you shoot and where do you start? Well, here's my strategy that I used and it helped me to produce some of my best selling images. And this is how I did it. When you're planning your shoots, one of the best ways to do this is looking at what opportunities there are on Shutterstock. You can do this by searching your keyword and looking at the volume and amount of images attached to that keyword. 
For example, if you search the word egg, there are over 3 million images, which means the chances of your images being discovered are relatively low. However, if you search for something a bit more niche, like one man army concept, there are only 2,500 images, so there's a lot more opportunity here. And as you can see, these are two of my images on the first page. So I highly recommend doing your research first and looking for what opportunities exist on Shutterstock and then planning your shoots around where the opportunities are. You're never going to rank for those popular keywords because there's thousands of images already up there. However, there are a lot of keywords that have relatively low volume. So those are a great place to start and target. Ultimately, buyers are not looking for that perfect artistic shot. Instead, they probably want something more practical that they can use for a website, business or campaign. So keep this in mind when you're planning your shoots. Try to think about the images that buyers will actually use. If you started uploading to Shutterstock, then I'd love to see your portfolio. Drop a link in the description below. If you've also got any feedback or any tips you think I've missed, please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and have a great day.